Welcome to Countdown to Kickoff here on Midco Sports Network. After four straight national championships, North Dakota State now starts the drive for five. And although mainstays like John Crockett and Kyle Emanuel are no longer with the program, the expectations for this year's group doesn't change. You know, we talk about two things, maybe it's staying humble and staying hungry. And uh, that's kind of the, the mode we've talked about ever since we got back from Frisco last year. Is, you know what, be humble. What, what we've done is phenomenal, uh, but now we got to stay hungry. And those are the two things we kind of focus on. The Bison defense has been among the best in the nation over the last five years, giving up just 14 points per game last year. But that group has to replace seven starters, including the Buck Buchanan Award winner, Kyle Emanuel, who accounted for 19 and a half sacks. We're trying to replace him with maybe some more depth, maybe some more like character and like stuff like that. So like people just trying to like get into that role. So like me, Jerry Tuska, Stanley Jones, Greg Menard, people like that, we all need to step up and really contribute to replace what he like did. Junior Nick DeLuca started six games at linebacker for the Bison during their playoff run last season, but there will be two new starters on the outside, including Harvey, North Dakota native MJ Stumpf, who is finally getting his chance to take the field. That mentality around here is the next guy up has got to do his job, so I feel like I've been here long enough where I, you know, I'm finally figuring out exactly what I'm doing. I'm knowing the defense. I'm, became, I'm taking more leadership role now. So, you know, it is a cool thing, but, you know, I'm just another guy trying, you know, trying to fill that spot so that we can become a successful defense. He's figured it out. He understands where his role is. He's really productive right now in these first three days. He's really confident running around. Um, so he'll be a guy that, that we're counting on. I, I see uh, being really hard to knock MJ out of the starting lineup. The secondary also has to replace both safeties and nearly 120 career starts. But both corners return, including C.J. Smith and Jordan Champion, who accounted for a school record 27 pass breakups last year. I've definitely been like a coach um, this fall camp so far, and even in the summer. Um, I sit down with the, a lot of the guys and uh, tell them what they're, they're doing good and things that they can do better. And it's just a, it's just a long process, um, just getting these guys ready day in, day in and day out. A Bison offense that put up nearly 450 yards a year ago has the luxury of returning one of the top quarterbacks in the country. Carson Wentz bursted onto the scene as a junior, throwing for 25 touchdowns and nearly 3,000 yards. You know, we got weapons all over the place. Our O-line, the entire O-line is, is back more or less. And so, you know, we know we have a lot of guys to do it. We just got to take it one, one step at a time. Our goal is not necessarily to be the best ever. You know, it's, it's just to be the best that each of us can be. You know, I'm gonna be the best Joe Hag, Zach Johnson the best Zach Johnson he can be. And I think that uh, just you know, working together, I think that we have great, you know, good potential to be a really good offensive line. In the backfield, a trio of running backs are anxious to show what they can do to follow in the footsteps of some of the Bison greats that have come before them. Replacing the production of John Crockett won't be easy, but this group is hoping to take things to an even higher level. We plan on exceeding what we did last year. We don't, we don't cut ourselves short any. We, we plan on exceeding what we did last year by a lot. So, and we got, we got great backs. Me, Chase, and Lance, and, and we got a couple of young clubs that's coming up right now who are really good. So, we're not worried at all. We're going to produce just as much, if not more, than what we did last year. The receiving core should also be a strength, with veteran Zach Vraw back for a sixth year and true sophomore R.J. Erzendowski coming off a standout freshman campaign. Add in a deep tight end group that includes Luke Albers, Jeff Ilias, and Connor Wentz, and the Bison have plenty of weapons through the air. Obviously with Carson coming back, still improving as a player, we know that we can still do a lot of stuff as a team, um, implement some new plays, run some new stuff that we've never gotten to before. So, you know, that keeps me motivated and hungry to, you know, to see what will be coming up next. Finally on special teams, first team all-conference punter Ben LeCompte returns, but will now add place kicking duties to his plate, a challenge head coach Chris Kleiman hopes he's up for. I'm comfortable with Ben. I mean, it's, if you're going to put a guy in 26,000 seat stadium um, to kick a 30 yard field goal, 40 yard field goal, uh, I feel good about Ben, but he, he's got to have a lot of progress. You know, he's got, it's going to take him a while. But regardless of who lines up where, the Bison feel they have more than enough talent to make a fifth straight trip to Frisco in January. It's hard to match with some of the guys that have been here and the defense and just the structure and the athletes that have been here, but it's just, you know, we're just another year and it's our year and, we, you know, it's up to us to show what we can do. 
We know our abilities, we know the guys in our locker room are ready for this, and we know that we can do it. So it's just more of a confidence level that we need to have, and obviously we're going to have some adversity this season. It's not all going to be like sunshine and rainbows, but we need to push through, we need to get through and just win some games. I know we got the guys at all these positions that can get the job done, and get the job done very well. The Bison open the schedule in the FCS kickoff against Montana coming up on August 29th. After the home opener against Weber State, the Bison will take on in-state rival North Dakota, the first time those two teams have met in the Division I era. After a bye week, NDSU will take on South Dakota State in Brookings. Western Illinois will then visit Fargo before wrapping up the season with Youngstown State and Missouri State. That's a look at NDSU. Stick with us as Tom Neiman breaks down South Dakota State as the countdown to kickoff continues here on Midco Sports Network. This countdown to kickoff SDSU football segment on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Now, here's your host of Jackrabbit Journal, Tom Neiman. Welcome back to the Countdown to Kickoff special on Midco Sports Network. South Dakota State University has put together back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back nine-win FCS playoff seasons. And the Jackrabbits look to keep that streak rolling this year, in large part because of a defense that could and should be one of the best in the country. Yeah, I think so. We got a lot of guys back, and I feel like we're a lot, very talented group. So hopefully we just got to keep working hard. Obviously, we can improve a lot. Oh, we got a lot of work to do, but yeah, we, we all feel pretty good about where we're at. There's a lot of guys on this defense, and I think that's what's going to make the the whole defense special is that there's so many of us that are coming back and we, we're going to look to make a difference, like we will make a difference. The defense has to be special. I mean, not only because we lost a bunch of guys in offense, but because if you want to get to where we want to be, you got to play great defense. You know, I, uh, it, I'm not long for this world if the games are 48 to 46. You know, that's not meant to happen in football. Well, in that case, Stig will probably stick around for a while because the SDSU defense should be salty. They are loaded at linebacker with Jesse Bobbitt and Patrick Schuster and Tom Pites and Dallas Brown and J.T. Hassel and Drew Kreitzfeldt all with experience and all led by senior T.J. Lally, who has started every game for the last three years. If we're not one of the best defenses in the country, we, uh, we you know, we feel like we will, we will have failed what we, the potential that we have. And so, uh, you know, we're not there yet right now, but we're, we're close and we're, we're, I'm, I'm really excited to go to battle with these guys. There, there's so many guys that are, some of, the, some of the young guys are doing things that, you know, we've never really seen some people do on this team before. Some of those young guys will be redshirt freshmen in the defensive backfield. Freaky good athletes like Jordan Brown at cornerback and Micaiah Slade and Alex Romanesco at safety. But they will all back up returning starters Jimmy Forsyth and Jerian Butler at the corners, Nick Mears at strong safety, and sophomore Nick Farina who steps in at free safety. The one big defensive question in camp is up front with the big guys on the D-line, a unit that was 115th out of 123 teams in the country last year in sacks, and they know that they will be judged on that stat this year. Yeah, that's fair. After last year only having uh, eight in Missouri Valley play, you know, we, we, we've, we've set a goal. We need to have two and a half a game. Um, and that's not just the whole defense, that's the de defensive front. Brown says that Cole Langer and Kellen Sulik and J.R. Plody and Shane Gottlob are all proven performers on that defensive front, while Christian Benaziak and Chase Kern and Landon Schultz all have a chance to step up this season, along with true freshman Blake Witzel and Jared Bloom, a transfer from the University of Nebraska. Again, a group that could be good on a defense that should be special. We've got enough guys with experience that you say it should be, you know, but it's, it's guys that maybe don't have as much experience that need to understand the concept that maybe they're, maybe they're not going to make the starting unit, but they got to fight like crazy to take reps away from the starting unit. Well, on offense, the Jackrabbits graduated their all-time leading passer, a top-10 career-wide receiver, and a running back, Zach Zenner, who ran for more than 6,000 yards in the last three years. And even with all of that talent gone, the Jacks are still pretty confident they're going to be able to score some points this year. I've been underdog all my life, um, so I, I personally love, love that role, and I know our entire offense is thriving in that role. Zach Lujan stepped in and started seven games at quarterback last year and then went back to the bench in November when Austin Sumner returned from injury. I still think the toughest thing in football is the, that I've ever experienced was to give up the starting position once, once I had it. Um, but I, I, am, I find peace in the fact that I would have made the same decision. Um, you know, he was a three-year starter, or four-year starter, three-year team captain. You know, it, was, it was his team at that point. Uh, so now it's just 
Yeah, I, I want to make it my team. So will it be his team? It looks like it. While freshman Taryn Christian has been getting snaps with the second team, Lujan has been the number one guy in practice all fall. Right now, if we played today, he'd be the guy. And that's, you know, going into it. Um, you don't give anybody anything until they've, you know, kind of proven. Because I think then it makes you better. You don't, you don't relax, you don't settle. But I think he knew going into it that it was his job to lose and he's approached it the right way. There are several factors in Lujan's favor. He put on 15 pounds of muscle over the summer. He knows the system, and he has a solid relationship with star wide receiver Jake Winicky. Yeah, we do. I mean, last year he, he played and we threw the ball a lot and uh, built off, build off that over the spring and summer, so it's going to be fun. Well, the Jacks will need another wide out to break out this year with Connor Landberg and Trevor Wesley and Matt Raymond among the possibilities. At running back, sophomore Brady Mangarelli will most likely step in as the starter with Zach Zenner gone. Originally, I felt a lot of pressure, and I was like, but then I thought about it, and I said, there's 10 other guys out there on offense, all with the same goal. We got six or seven coaches on offense, all with the same goal. So there's no pressure, you know what I mean? Just, just play, you know, there's 10 other people out there, 11 others on defense. So there's a lot of people trying to do the same thing, so you're not alone. Mangarelli probably won't get 25 carries a game, but will share the totes with redshirt freshman Isaac Wallace and senior Reggie Gandy. And they will run behind a line that is 60% settled with returning starters. Left tackle Bryce Cyberling, left guard Dylan Sider, and center Jacob Onisorgi. Senior Taylor Bloom and junior college transfer Jeremiah Safransky have been getting first team runs on the right side. It's a jackrabbit offense that's going to have plenty of potential heading into the season opener at Kansas. Well, that's it from Brookings. When we come back, we'll take you to Vermillion, where Jay Elson has the latest on the South Dakota Coyotes. This countdown to kickoff USD football segment on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Now, here's your host of Coyote Corner, Jay Elson. Welcome back to Midco Sports Network's countdown to kickoff. I'm Jay Elson. You don't have to follow the University of South Dakota football program all that closely to know that things have been rough for the Coyotes. Rough to the tune of seven wins over the past three seasons. Externally, the expectations aren't much higher for 2015, with the Coyotes picked to finish last in the Valley. But no one here seems to care what anyone outside the program has to say. The Yotes believe things are getting better. It's a good thing we get to play all the games. You know, we'll be healthier. Uh, we've got some birthdays that I've been praying for. Our team seems very determined, very confident, um, very motivated. We're just coming in, trying to compete every Saturday. That's all we can do. Uh, try to become a respected team in the Missouri Valley. We're not going to put a, a tag on how many wins we have to have this year or anything like that. Uh, we're just going to keep it basic and, and try to compete week in, week out. The team's really bought in and the guys are, the character of the team's changed and we really look, looking to be competitive in the Missouri Valley this year. And nobody wants to go home this year in Thanksgiving. That's our goal. The success of the Coyotes will hinge largely on how the three most significant preseason storylines unfold. The first centers around the quarterback. With presumed starter Kevin Earl ruled out for the season with a back injury, the keys to the offense are in the hands of Ryan Sager. The 6'4", 220-pound redshirt junior proved capable last season leading the Yotes to a 2-2 two two record in four starts, including a win over nationally ranked Northern Arizona. That experience, coupled with his rep-heavy offseason, is already paying dividends. I think it all helps, the, the four games last year, playing a few big games, obviously getting a little bit of time at Oregon, uh, starting against Montana and Northern Arizona. Uh, it, it all factors into it, and then obviously having a, a full camp, a full spring ball camp to uh, help tone my game and help get in sync with these receivers, it all helps. Teammates say Sager is throwing better and thinking quicker than he did last season. But most agree that his single biggest improvement has come in the leadership department. He's acting like this is his team. Ryan's my roommate, so I see it every day. I see his confidence changing. Um, you know, it started last spring ball when he started taking, you know, all the reps when Kevin started having the back problems. And, you know, we're saying, you're going to be the guy. So he really just stepped up his confidence, and he's been a real leader on this team. You know, Sager didn't used to really be a guy who would say much. You know, he would make a couple plays, you know, say let's go here and there. But, you know, he's stepping it up. He's out there loud and vocal. He's telling people, get there, get here, do this, do that. And that's what we need in our quarterback. Life will be a lot easier for Sager if the Coyotes can keep guys healthy behind him. 
after seeing injuries decimate the running back group again in 2014, adding depth at the position became one of the top offseason priorities. USD addressed that need through both recruiting and position changes, and the coaching staff is confident that they now have enough quality options to keep the running game on track for a full season. Really, it's about you know making sure that we're we're using the right guys consistently day in and day out. You know what I mean? So that's probably the biggest thing that we need to do. Um, and we did recruit some guys there. So it'll be fun to see where those guys are at and look forward to seeing how they can help this football team because we have five to six guys that um, could potentially play at that spot. Junior Trevor Bama, who's rushed for nearly 1,300 yards despite missing double-digit games over his first two seasons, will be the Yotes' top option. Defensively, much of the focus in fall camp has been on the team's new 4-3 scheme, which was implemented for the first time this spring. It's still a work in progress, but defensive coordinator Jason Petrino likes the direction things are heading. When we've lined up and we've been able to play fast when we've been at our best, regardless what defense we were in. So it's really kind of allowed those guys that uh, maybe don't have as much experience can come in and just kind of get lined up, trust the progression, their key reads, and then just play fast. And, um, you know, and like I said, it's been a positive result so far. The new look defense may be making life a little easier on the young guys, but initially the idea was to accentuate the skills of the team's top defenders. For some, including defensive lineman Drew Eddings and linebacker Kean Loggy, that's been a shift in responsibilities. It moves me around a lot more between different positions and it does keep me away from the doubles a little more and it, it does free me up a little bit. I feel like it's a position where I can really succeed and kind of fit in on the defense. The first test for that defense and the Coyotes as a whole will be a big one. USD will open up at Kansas State on September 5th. It'll be the team's eighth FBS opponent in the last six seasons, but their first meeting with the Wildcats since 1982. We go out, we fight, and we show that we can stick people, we can make the big plays, we can make catches, we can make the blocks, we, we can only get better from that. And it's a, it'll be a great experience being up against a team like K-State. The bottom line is, I, you want to become a better football team, uh, win, lose, or draw. And if you go play a really good football team, you'll have to go against really good competition. And I think good competition makes you better. The University of North Dakota showed significant improvement in Bubba Schweigert's first year at the helm, but can UND continue to close the gap on the Big Sky's best teams? Dan Hammer will have the outlook from Grand Forks when we come back. This countdown to kickoff UND football segment on Midcoast Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RydellCars.com, and Hugo's Family Marketplace. Now, here's your host of UND Sports Extra, Dan Hammer. Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff. The University of North Dakota is in its second season under head coach Bubba Schweigert and his staff. Early in its tenure, the staff established a theme that is, we know who we want to be and we know what type of team we want to be. And last season, the signs of that theme were already in place. Huh? 16 starters what? returned from 2014 when North Dakota went right. five and seven overall and three and five in the big sky. The season was highlighted by a defense that saw one of the biggest turnarounds in all of FCS. It ranked among the national leaders in tackles for loss and was at or near the top of the big sky conference in several categories including total defense and rushing defense. UND defense does it for a third consecutive series. Injuries hit the offense hard in 2014, with players being sidelined at every skilled position. Joe Moberg started the first eight games of the season at quarterback, but saw his season end with an injury. Ryan Bartles replaced Moberg then missed the final four games of the season with a shoulder injury. Those injuries thrust then true freshman Keaton Studrude into the starting role for the final four games of the year. You know, mentally I made some big jumps and just knowing coming in like what to expect and what we need to know just from a day-to-day -day basis. If the season started today, Studrude would be the starter, but Moberg and Bartles are making the position a three-way competition. 
You know, each day there's little things we got to get better at. But I'm just happy to be out here, and I, I think we're all doing what we need to do to help this team. Um, Coach Rudolph emphasized our uh, we need to make a big jump passing, passing wise. Um, last year we ran the ball quite a bit, and um, we did great with that at the end of the year with Jared and all that. But uh, we definitely need to make a jump with uh, passing. And, um, continuing to grow on that. Still, UND's offense starts with the run game. But for parts of fall camp, injuries slowed three of the top backs, including Jawan Arrington, the projected starter who transferred from UAB. Improved our personnel, and our guys that are here got better. So we feel better about our offense, and we need to do better, especially early in the year. You know, it was a real struggle for us a year ago moving the ball and with any consistency and we need we need to do better at that uh, it's still a challenge for us you know the offensive line still has a ways to go here in the fall camp to get more consistent I think we got a lot more weapons now than we did last year I mean we got seven more guys at wide receiver than last year at this time so it helps a lot there's a lot of competition and helps push everyone to a higher level and now that we're all back for our second year they the coaches are holding us to a higher standard and we got to go out there and do that the table seems to be set for another strong year defensively for North Dakota. Seven starters returned from last year's defense, which was the most improved in the Big Sky Conference. UND returns five of its top six tacklers, including leading tackler Will Rattel, along with fellow starting linebackers Dial Edu and Todd Rich. Defensive coordinator Eric Schmidt is the architect of the revived defense which looks to take bigger steps this season. Uh, I think for us it's just, hey, becoming better at pursuit, becoming better at tackling, becoming better at, at uh, getting turnovers and takeaways. And, and those are the things that, if you can do those better, you can become dominant. I think we had a, a good year last year, but you know, we're turning the page. And now in, our, in order for us to be uh, you know, a great defense, we need to work on, on, uh, on those fundamentals, be better at it, and then get better, obviously, at our schemes as well. UND has added depth in the secondary, and two newcomers are in line to be in the starting lineup on September 5th. Zach Arnell transferred from Santa Barbara Community College and is currently the starter at strong safety. But he's got competition from another newcomer, Jawan Johnson, who joined UND from the New Mexico Military Academy. Always, always on defense. We play a lot of guys, and we got to have a lot of guys ready. So, you know, we'll still make it competitive. But Zach's had a real good fall camp up to this point, both mentally and he makes some plays. He's got really good hands. You know, when he gets his hands on balls, he's able to make picks. So. We just felt it's the right thing to do at this time. The most heated competition is at cornerback, where six players are currently in the mix for the top four spots in the rotation. Chris Brown, a returning starter from a year ago, is running with the number one defense, while Mississippi State transfer Jameer Irvin Sills is in the top four at corner. You know, I'm adjusting to the system pretty well. A lot of stuff we're running here, uh, I ran at Mississippi State, so it's kind of like a review, so I'm just, dusting off some stuff and trying to get better. That was a point of emphasis, obviously going through the league the first time was, hey, we need to get longer and we need to get better in the secondary. And uh, we have a ton of competition there right now as well. We have, at both sides probably, uh, there's six guys vying for the starting spots at the corners. And then obviously you work your way through the depth chart from there. Chris Carter, Deion Harris, Charles Flowers, and true freshman Tyus Carter are all part of the crowded competition at cornerback. Jason. Dip, rip. Along the defensive line, Square. defensive ends Brandon Dranka and Drew Greeley return after breakout freshman seasons. Meantime, there's a position battle at nose guard with Tank Harris and Kyle Woodsmall, the front runners. UND opens the season September 5th at Wyoming. Coming up next on the countdown to kickoff, we'll take a look at the Midco Sports Network football broadcast schedule. Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff. Midco Sports Network will bring you 14 live college football games this fall, starting on Saturday, September 12th, with North Dakota hosting Drake. And our first doubleheader of the season is UC Davis at North Dakota, followed by Robert Morris at South Dakota State on September 26th. The October schedule features a doubleheader on the third with Bo Pelini in Youngstown State at South Dakota, followed by the Dakota Marker game, North Dakota State at South Dakota State. And into November, we wrap it up with the rivalry game, the Jackrabbits in Vermilion to take on the Coyotes. 